Aloha friends and family, welcome back to the garden. Go ahead and get in tune with the birdies. I'm sure everybody's seen the story where a mega church of some kind is having major healings and miracles. It gets a huge promotion, and <clears throat> subsequently, a lot of people end up showing up to the place because a lot of people have ailments and issues and things they'd like to be healed of. <clears throat> and you know and they go and, and the people proceed across the stage and the preacher bestows the healing upon them sometimes getting real you know fanatical and goofy where people have to you know fall down and be caught by people behind them and it's all sort of staged and, and set up and I don't know it's like group mind you know you go into that mode well I can't be the one person that remains standing and, and kind of laughs out loud <laughs> like you know what is this big show God doesn't need to do all this to heal people Can God heal people that way? Or does he? I mean, I'm not the one to say he, he doesn't or couldn't. But this facade thing they do is pretty ridiculous. And you come to find out all these people filled out greeting cards when they first came through the doors and wrote down some information like what would you like God to heal you of or whatever and they wrote it down and the minute everybody's inside and singing the songs or whatever they got people pouring over all those cards and they're ready to match the card up with the person on the stage so when the person on stage comes up in a wheelchair and they wrote on their card, you know, I'd like God to restore my ability to walk. So the preacher has an earpiece in. And they're telling him. <clears throat> they're telling him what this person wants to be healed of or whatever. And you know, of course, if they're if they're going through all that, you know they're gonna have some blatantly fake ones, like the one in the wheelchair that supposedly can't walk and hasn't walked for years, and he's gonna get up and start walking and jumping and all that. And it's just gonna be like, whoa, man, wow. The God that they preach and serve and speak of is doing some amazing stuff here. But it's all faked. It's all scripted. But see, that doesn't invalidate God at all. Because that has nothing to do with God. It doesn't invalidate the real miracle. See, the real miracle would have been the person going up there in absolute faith, not in the preacher, <clears throat> but in God. That God is going to honor my open attempt and sincere desire to be healed of whatever and so god could still do that for them so it doesn't invalidate the real miracles either but in that environment i would imagine that the miracles actually are going to be less than if you were just you know at an ashram or out in nature, you know, in a, in a small gathering of 
self-realized people or self-realizing people because you see that whole other thing that all other thing that's a big ego thing that's a big fleshly ego trip and it makes the church a lot of money and makes the the preachers and pastors a lot of money so it's a racket it's a business Not all of them, I'm not here to point out who's who. I don't know who's who. I just know how it works. So, of course, that's put a kind of a stain on Christianity as being very fake and very rigid. You know, you're with people that would see you smoking a cigarette and be like, oh, you're out of the will of God. And, you know, and they would immediately be much higher than you. And they could, you know, tell you all these things about how you're, you're bad or you're off or something's wrong with you or you need, you know, you need all these things. Well, that part might be true. I think we all need all those things from God. <laughs> so see, it's all mixed and convoluted. And then you have 500 different brands. And so it all just gets thrown into the one word, you know, Christianity. Christianity. Or sometimes they say modern Christianity. But it doesn't matter what it is, government, religion, Christianity. They're all human systems. And if the humans in the systems are fully convinced that they are their ego and they're living out this dream as that ego self instead of as their authentic dream self, See, trying to tell people to wake up from the dream in the dream that's you know that's equivalent to I don't know telling them to I don't even know what because it just it won't compute at all it won't compute whatsoever So it's a great challenge in this day and age to be able to even talk about anything spiritual or having to do with God and be able to make any kind of connection. Unless the person perceives that you are down with their beliefs. I mean, if it, if it matches up to their beliefs, then of course it's going to boost the ego and everybody's going to smile and think that they feel great. But how could they feel great if they're not connected to their souls, if they're not tapping into cosmic mind? So it's an illusion that you feel great in the ego So what, what about the ego? What do we do about this? I used to think we kill the ego. We just friggin' stomp it. Well, <laughs> no. That's not what we do. And you really can't, you can't, you can do that, but you can't stomp it out of existence. You could stomp on it. You could beat yourself down. But you can't beat yourself down and out of existence. That's the problem. So that's not going to work. So 
So what if, you know, there's all these thoughts of, well, what could we do to make that ego do what we want it to do? Do what the higher self would like it to do. And then the heart chakra, and then the alignment, and then back to first cause. Love. Hmm, love. What if we love the ego? Well, uh-oh, that sounds slippery as hell already. Because don't, doesn't the, we're not talking about the ego self loving the ego self. We're talking about the higher self shining love on the ego. And then the ego isn't defensive because you're not attacking it. You're not attacking yourself. So it's willing to hear you out. And the more you get your ego in a position where it will hear you out, it will hear God out, it'll begin to realize, oh my God. <laughs> You know, oh my God. That's really a much better plan. That's really a much better way. That's really everything that I was trying to do anyway. I was just doing it separate. So now we can do it as one. Again, not only individually, collectively. We will be doing it as one. We will be living as one. But we will never live as one as the majority or egos, let us guess, and some of them are their higher self. And some of them are just indifferent and just absolutely don't go either way. They just float in the no, you know, the no man zone or the the know-nothing zone. And then some are doing it as their higher... I think I already said that, as their higher selves. And then some of them are doing it using the cosmic mind. But see, that's... We're not all living together. And now we got all these labels and groups and... You know, it's just so split up and fractured. That seemingly we will never live as one. But see this, again, it's just reflecting. So if it's all split up and fractured, that means we were all split up and fractured. The triune self completely disassembled. Not in reality, in the illusion. But we're here in the illusion. So we feel it. We see it. It has a great effect. And not a great effect for great. A great effect for further fracturing. <clears throat> and more division. And so I think the whole darn world is realizing this, seeing this, feeling this. And so the question marks are popping up, you know what to do what to do and if you do this from the mind you could go into all kinds of different ideas some of them good some of them bad but if you come at it through the heart what to do we need to go back to god somehow we got way away from god well i don't even believe in god your heart is not concerned about what your mind still says that it believes or not. Your heart knows, friend. Your heart knows that you need to be a complete triune being and not just this ego maniac. <laughs> And to get back to God, we get back to self. And we go within self, deep within self. 
to discover that there is seemingly this process that needs to unfold to allow those three parts of the triune self to come back together. See, they can't just be instantly thrown back together and all of a sudden you're, you know, transfigured. Because you got all this stuff within you that still would have to be worked out. And so it would throw your mind into a state of chaos and you would go what the rest of the world would say was crazy. And you'd become, you know, a loon. So get all that other stuff dealt with as your peace, as God's piecing you back together. As you're able to handle it. And then when you get to the completed triune self in full recognition and full cooperation with an ego that you no longer fight with or attack or and doesn't attack you and there's no duality between your soul and your mind then you're in <clears throat> you're in the power <clears throat> excuse me Then you're in the power, power zone, power mode. Then you do the miraculous healings that the, that the fakers are trying to fake. <clears throat> then that kind of stuff manifests naturally and effortlessly. So you're not going to go out there and do some huge promotion and try to bring a bunch of egos to you. A truly spiritual, self-realized person would never, probably never do that. I, I guess I can't say never, right? But it's unlikely that, that they're going to do that. But it'd be very likely <clears throat> that if you came across them and it was a divine meeting, if you will, that you would get what you came for. Uh, maybe it wasn't healing. Maybe it was just a word. Maybe it was just a glimmer off of that stone that allows you to see it in a way that you had not ever seen it, but wanted to see it, knew you wanted to see it. You just could didn't know how to see it. Like, how do I see it? Sometimes you need to be shown. But are we looking? Are we listening? Are we present? Is our mind still enough to get into this zone? And this zone is way different, man, <clears throat> than the zone you're in if you're watching TV and you're listening to 500 words a minute. And most of it's repeated, so it's driving it deeper in because you've already heard it. You've already thought about it. You've already ran that track loop. And it affects, you know, your frequency. And it keeps you in a certain frequency. And it could be anything that does the same thing as that. I just use that as an example because it seems like the whole, our whole society got utterly mind wrecked by the TV, be it news, movies, ideas, fantasies, vain imaginings, you name it, on and on. Anything and everything. <clears throat> But anything that has that effect, I mean, it could be video games for 12 hours straight, right? It could be 
uh, computer programming for 12 hours straight. It could be mathematical, mathematical computations for 12 hours straight. Or eight hours straight. Or five hours straight. Or, I don't know, any amount of time. If it's having that effect. To keep your frequency denser. See, the deeper frequency goes, the denser into matter the ego becomes. If you want to feel light and airy and like an angel, get your frequency higher. And the higher your frequency gets, the lighter you become. The lighter this illusion becomes, or this dream, or this simulation. It doesn't matter which terms you think of about it in. It's, it's all your uh, perception anyway. But to make it clear for the mind, for the ego that's now cooperating, <clears throat> we're in a dream, friend. This is our dream character. And it's not a character like it's some plastic. No, no, it's, it's you in the dream. When you go to sleep at night and you leave your body, you're more your real self than you are awake right now. But see, we're on a quest, we're on a mission, and we're bringing the realness of the real self, true self, authentic self, God self, into this dream, into this waking dream. And we're stabilizing it here. <clears throat> because <clears throat> we want this dream to uh, blossom and flourish not crash and burn. That's how cool God thinks this is. Cool enough to not just smash it and start a new one. Because we could certainly do that, couldn't we? But no, then all of Everything that led up to now would just be for naught, right? If it was all just obliterated. All the lives you've lived in on within this place. <clears throat> all the dream characters you've gone through in this place. And if you could see yourself in full, you would realize how much you've grown, how much you've learned, how far you've progressed. You know, spiritual soul consciousness. God consciousness, cosmic consciousness. <laughs> and you would realize how so very important every single aspect of it was because you'd be looking at it in past tense and you would immediately know that under no circumstances would the option be to just destroy it all and start again and maybe not even start again I mean if it all turned out so bad that it had to be destroyed utterly would you even want to start again? Would you want to play that game again? Or would you take your quarter and go drop it into another slot and try to find a better game? But see, God doesn't make mistakes. So it's all going to blossom. It's blossoming now. It's blossoming as we speak. The flower is unfurling. See, we've been looking at the bud for a long time, wondering, you know, is that thing going to flower? 
or is a late frost going to kill it? And see, that's all the ego was, was a late frost. And we didn't know if it was going to kill it. You know, you don't know until later after it either blossoms or falls off and dies. Uh, but it's not going to kill the bud. It, it's flowering. It's flowering and it's going to be magnificent. It's going to be amazing and beautiful and wonderful. <clears throat> and we're all going to be in oneness and in attunement and in alignment. I don't care how it gets between now and that moment or how you perceive it or how we might think. You know, the ego still got its old tendencies, right? Yeah, but you haven't heard this. Yeah, but if this happened, then this would all happen. See, it just, it's got, it's endless. So we may as well just, again, shine love upon it until it becomes convinced that God's way is the best way. And it's ready and willing to go along with God. And be of service. Be ready to be of service to God. When God says, I need this done. I'm on it. I'm on it. I need you to make videos and put them out there. Yeah, but I don't want to talk every day about the same thing. No, no, no. You think I get old? What, are you going to listen to the ego? You know, that's an old ego thought some reason to do other than what you're compelled to do. Not forced to do. God's not trying to talk me into it. He just said do it a while ago. And I had no idea you know what what that meant at the time. <clears throat> Sounded like a fun, egoic thing to do at the time, you know. Oh, a channel. Cool, you know. I'll go on there and make videos and rant about religion and politics and everything else. And, but no, that's not what it, that's not what God was asking for. So I didn't do a lot of that. And I had to sit in silence <laughs> And, like, really get clear, like, what am I doing then? What What is the purpose then? And who the hell's going to care anyway? Huh? We're not asking you to overthink it. We're just saying, will you do this? Okay. All right. Now I, you know, now I'm past all that. Now I get it. I'm... My ego is cooperating with God again. And I think yours is too. And I think a lot of people's are. And that's why we want to either hear stuff like this or speak to other people like this or have conversations about this and just get into this space. Because it's out of that egoic headspace of just overwhelming information that's just too much to process. And it's all pretty much negative anyway. So who wants to process tons of negative information? How's that going to make you feel? How is your reality going to unfold if that's what you know we do? If that's what we allow our ego to do? <clears throat> So I've been giving that one up for a while. And I gave up you know, TV a long time ago. I haven't had a TV, functioning TV in my house for years and years. I intuitively knew, man, this this thing right here will get you. This sucker right here. And I'd have people telling me, ah, oh, this movie, did you see this? You, you know, just, oh. it was like nothing came out of a human that didn't relate directly to that TV. 
Now think about it. Think about people you know right now when they start passing information to you. Where is it coming from? Is it coming from the TV somehow? Whether it was a movie, whether it was news, whether it, whether it was a documentary, a historically factual, here's what's up, a space odyssey, uh, a, a telescopic rundown of the stars. I mean, that's all coming from the TV. Has been for a long time. Man, when you find the silence again, like I said the other day, it's like uh, you were watching a commercial that was years long, and you're made to wait. You know, you have to you have to wait till the commercial's over. You can't hit that little button and skip it, and you can't if you want to get to what you came for. You have to sit through that commercial, and it's like drug on for two and a half years. You're like, oh my god, I can't wait till this commercial's over. Jeez, this is insane. And then when you find the silence again, and you're in meditation, and you finally quiet the ego mind, <clears throat> it's like it finally ended. That commercial finally ended. And now you get to get what you came for, get what you were looking for. And it's a confirmation of something you're already intuiting because everything's coming from within you anyway. It's all, it's all coming from within you. But it's great to get confirmations, I guess. You know, the e maybe the ego part of us likes... Likes the confirmation because it's letting it know, hey, man, you're you're doing a good job. You're not effing everything up anymore. You're not getting lost in that mind and spinning around for days just to realize, man, I did it again. I did it again. And so once here, man, once here in the Garden of Eden, in that quiet centeredness, <clears throat> now we can start to ask questions. Ones that are well placed. And ones that we could only get the answer from, from through cosmic mind or from God, if you like it that way. And to me, that's when this dream gets exciting because now we have the ability and the knowing and the know-how to change the whole entire dream because now it's you and God in oneness and this God made this dream possible. So if God made this dream possible, then he could allow you himself our oneness to change the dream in any way we wanted to i mean we were allowed to change it for the worst right through the ego through the split through the divide through the fracture we were allowed to do that well if we were allowed to do that you don't think we're going to be allowed and encouraged to alter this dream for something great something beautiful and check my time well See, that's a wrap for this one. I enjoyed meditating with you, with the birds, with the animals. I've been seeing a lot more deer. 
lately coming like into my yard I haven't seen too many deer well for a long time I didn't see no deer in my yard I'd see tracks but I'd never see no deer but I've seen a quite a few lately and one of them was just staring me down and looking right at me I had no idea I was sitting out here and I shifted my position and looked over and he was just standing or she a little bit young and uh, just looking at me so I looked at him and I looked away and he walked toward a bush of mine that he loves to eat but I've got it bird netted up so he can't eat it because they'll just strip this thing down to sticks which will eventually kill it and defoliate it it's a uh, Indian laurel boy if you if you have deer and you plant an Indian laurel, good luck to you if you don't burden at it. Because they love that plant. Or that bush. Once it gets humongous, I'll let them eat on it. <clears throat> they can be the natural trimmers. but And they can get big. I mean, we're talking about a bush that can get 10 feet wide and 15 plus feet high. And evergreen. <clears throat> and thick, but it's not like a cedar. You know, it's got leaves. Anywho, should do a garden video soon. I don't know. I don't know if... I love watching gardening videos of other people's gardens. Even, I just, I don't know. I. It's a, sort of meditative to do that. So I don't know if people want me to make a garden video. I could do that and walk around and look at plants and... I'll show you my red Chinese noodle beans before we depart, since they're right here. See them on the plant. I almost got to do that. Tender, no strings. <clears throat> you just chop them up. You can stir fry them. I never boil them. I'm sure you could, like some people boil green beans. I always just chop them up and put them in some sort of a stir fry thing. And then these over here are Anasazi beans. And they're not red like that, or long like that. And they're not tender and edible in the same way. You pretty much have to get the beans out of them. I don't know, this particular bush hasn't made too many yet, anyway. And then we've got the uh, hibiscus. show you the front oh, I could show you my melons there's the melons starting to spill out let's see if we can show you my melons here's my melon can you see it probably can't <clears throat> I think that's a Santa Santa Claus melon. I can't remember. I did four different kinds. <clears throat> Darn throat. I did four different kinds. And I think, let's see, one, two, yeah, I think one of them's gone because one of my, one of the main, the stems rotted at the base of the plant. So the whole plant had to go. But I think I had doubled up on that one, actually. So I still have one that's doing good of that one. Because I had done two of that one. But I just did one of each because you can't overdo melons. Because they just they'll go, grow crazy. But these tomatoes are growing crazy too, man. I mean, this is basically one plant here. I'll give you perspective. One plant. One plant, one plant, one plant, one plant, down to about here. And then there's another one right here in this corner. That's, I mean, it's just going nuts. This one over here. See if you can see the tomatoes. I mean, it's just loaded. Loaded.
All right, my beautiful friends and family, we'll catch you on the next one.